Hi guys, it's me, Teacher Gon. In today's video, we will talk about the Triangle Inequality Theorems. So without further ado, let's do this topic. For this entire video, guys, we will talk about the three different inequality theorems about triangles. So let's start with theorem number one. It states here, in any triangle, the side opposite a larger angle is longer than the side opposite to the smaller angle. So we have here the side side to the corresponding angle angle. So what we have here is identify the largest and the smallest angle. So the question here is that how are we going to identify the angles from largest to the, to the smallest angle given only the side 6, 4, and 8? So we will use the idea of triangle inequality theorem number one. So we're in, we only have these sides, and then we will figure out which angle is the largest going to the smallest. First, let us identify the angles. In the first example, we have angle A. We have angle B. We have angle C. We will now arrange these three angles based on the measurement from the largest to the smallest given this information about the length of each side. So let us compare the sides 6, 4, and 8 units. Which one is the largest? Between the three sides or the three side measurements, which one is the largest? Very good. The largest is the 8 units which is side CB. Now, since side CB has the longest measurement or side, meaning the angle opposite to this side, which is angle A, is considered as the largest. So again, since CB is the longest side between the three sides, Automatically, using triangle inequality theorem number one, this angle opposite to it is the largest, meaning we will list down angle A. Sir, how true that this one is the largest angle, though we don't have the measurement yet? It is obvious that since this one is the largest, you mismo opening ito opposite to it is the longest side. And trust me, this theorem is already proven, okay? Meaning the largest is the angle A. What about the second to the largest angle? We will use or we will compare these two. Between 6 and 4 units, definitely 6 units is much longer compared to 4 units. Meaning the second to the longest side is side AC. And... Since side AC is second to the longest side, it simply means that the angle opposite to it, which is angle B, is the second largest angle. So we will have angle B. And definitely, your angle C, which is opposite to the shortest side, is considered as the smallest angle. So if it will ask to arrange the angles of this triangle, this is the arrangement from largest to the smallest, angle A, angle B, and angle C. Now you can pause the video for a while and try to figure out which angle is the largest, the smallest from this triangle. Now let's continue. We have here side AC which is 16, side AB which is 9 units, side BC is 8 units. Since we are asked from the largest, we will find first the longest side of this triangle ABC. So obviously, this one is the longest. Again, this one is the longest. Meaning, the largest angle is angle B. So we will write here angle B. Now, 
comparing 9 and 8, 9 is longer than 8, meaning this is the second to the largest angle. We have angle C. And lastly, the smallest angle is definitely angle A. That's how you use triangle and quality theorem in finding out which one is the largest or the smallest angle given these triangles. Now let's continue our discussion about triangle inequality theorem. Let's go with triangle inequality theorem number two. So it says, it states, states now let us proceed with triangle inequality theorem number two. It says here, in any triangle, the angle opposite a longer side is greater than the angle opposite to a shorter side. This is often summarized with the notation capital letter A, small letter A, corresponds to, or this one, <clears throat> let us proceed with triangle inequality theorem number two. It says here, in any triangle, the angle opposite a longer side is greater than the angle opposite to the shorter side. So as you can see, we have here angle angle implies to side side, and this is the notation. Larger angle corresponds to the longer side. Smaller angle corresponds to the shorter side. Now we have here examples, identify the largest and the smallest side or the longest and the smallest or shortest side. Now, for us to use this and figure to figure out which one is the longest and the smallest, we need to compare first, or we need to determine first which angle, which among the three angles here is the largest and the smallest. So we have here 80 degrees, 60 degrees, and 40 degrees. So which do you think is the largest angle? Okay, very good. The largest angle is angle B. This is the largest. Since this one is the largest, automatically, the side opposite to it is considered as the longest. So we will put here longest side is definitely side AC. What about the smaller side? Comparing these two, Angle, angle C, or the 40 degrees, is the, short, the smallest angle, meaning the side opposite to it, which is AB, is considered as the shortest side, which is side AB. Now, you can pause the video for a while and figure out which one is the longest or the shortest side given this second triangle. Now let's continue. Comparing these three angles, 30 degrees, 25 degrees, 125 degrees, automatically, this one is the largest angle, which is angle A. And the side opposite to it is side CB, meaning the longest side is simply side CB. What about the shortest side? As for the shortest side, we will compare 30 degrees and 25 degrees. This one is the smallest angle, meaning this side opposite to it, which is AC, is considered as the shortest side. That's it for theorem number two. I hope you learned something from theorem number one and number two. Now let us proceed with theorem number three. Okay? For number three, it says here that for any triangle, the sum of the lengths of any two sides must be greater than the length of the third side. So what does it mean? Let's say for example, we have triangle A, B, and C. In simpler terms, we will compare the sum of the two sides, of any two sides, to the third side or to the length of the third side of this triangle. So sabi dito, the sum of the lengths of any two sides must be greater than the length of the third side. 
So to illustrate that, let's try to use side AB plus side BC must be greater than the measurement of the third side, which is AC. In any combination, we can also use side BC plus the measurement of side AC must be greater than the length of the third side, which is AB. Paikotin pa natin. We can use also side AC plus the measurement of AB. When we add these two, it must be greater than the third side, which is BC. Now, if any condition fails, automatically it will not form a triangle because it says here, tell whether the given lengths of sides can form a triangle or not. So we will test this measurement 6, 12, and 8. So what are we going to do? We will add any two sides and we will compare it to the third side. Example, first 6 plus 12 and then we have 8. Add this two, the answer is 18 and the other is 8. Definitely, the sum of these two sides is greater than the third side. Next, let's try to combine the other measurements. We will use 12 and 8. And the third side is 6. What is 12 plus 8? The answer is 20. And this is 6. Comparing these two, definitely 20 is greater than 6. What about the third possibility? We have here 8 plus 6. And then we have the third side, which is 12. 8 plus 6 is 14. And the other is 12. Definitely this one, 14 is greater than 12, meaning the measurement 6, 12, and 8 can form a triangle. We will put here the measurements 10 form a triangle. Okay, so let's continue answering number 2. The measurements here are 4, 8, and 2. Using this property or this theorem, the sum of the, th of the first two sides must be greater than the, than the measurement of the third side. So we will first add 4 plus 8, and then we have 2. 4 plus 8 is 12, and definitely 12 is greater than 2. Next combination, we will use 8 plus 2. And then the third side is 4. 8 plus 2 is 10. And ver ver uh, definitely, 10 is greater than 4. Let's have a third combination. We have 2 plus 4. And the third side is 8. Now let's add 2 plus 4. The answer is 6. And the third side is 8. Do you think 6 is greater than 8? No. This one is less than. Since this one doesn't satisfy the theorem, sabi dito, it says here, the sum of the lengths of any two sides must be greater than the length of the third side. Since we have this kind of, uh, of inequality here, meaning the measurements 4, 8, 2 cannot form a triangle. That's it for the triangle inequality theorem number three. And since this one is the last one, I will give you an assignment. I will give you five, six, and ten. Can you please identify whether these measurements can form a triangle? So guys, if you're into my channel, don't forget to like and subscribe at hit the bell button for you to be updated sa ating latest uploads. Again, it's me, Teacher Gon. Maraming maraming salamat and bye!